The follow-up of adult-type diffuse gliomas is not as simple as just comparing the size between scans. There are a lot of therapies and to interpret the images correctly, you need to know something about the mechanism of action of these therapies. Just before the millennium, timozolamide was introduced, which methylates the DNA, prevents the repair of DNA NICs, leading to apoptosis of tumor cells. It was first approved for recurrent anaplastic astrocytoma, and on this example you can see that after one and a half year there's no signs of recurrence of tumor. Subsequently, temozolamide was approved as a first-line treatment for GBM, and if combined with radiotherapy, it can be used in a so-called STOOP protocol, which is named after a doctor, so it's not an acronym. Another drug that was introduced in 2009 inhibits the formation of new blood vessels in the tumor, and that's bevacizumab, which works against vascular endothelial growth factor. And as you can see on this example from the ATNR 2010, there is a diffuse infiltrating tumor with irregular enhancement decreasing after treatment with bevacizumab in size and a decrease in enhancement. A year later, however, there was another case published in the ATNR of a 47-year-old male with a GBM and bevacizumab with improvement of the post-contrast images, but very little change on the flare images. And this was called pseudo-response, and it is thought to be caused by closure of the blood-brain barrier, so it seems that there's less enhancement and less tumor, but there's no true death of tumor cells. In pseudo-response, there's no clinical improvement, although the images do approve. And in the response assessment neuro-oncological criteria, there's not only imaging findings, but it also takes into account the clinical status. Another thing that can happen after therapy is illustrated in this 59-year-old male with a glioblastoma. So he had a resection, and post-surgery there is residual enhancements surrounding the resection cavity. One to three months after resection and chemoradiotherapy, there is an increase in enhancement and in T2 abnormalities. They did a biopsy that was negative for viable tumor tissue, and after half a year until a year, the abnormalities decreased, and this was named pseudoprogression. And pseudoprogression is caused by disruption of the blood brain barrier. So, pseudo response, the blood brain barrier closes, and in pseudoprogression, there is endothelial damage leading to vasogenic edema, giving the impression of worsening without true tumor growth. It is more often seen in patients on a STOOP protocol, patients receiving high doses of radiation, and typically three to four months after treatment. To distinguish pseudoprogression from progression, um, you can again look at the clinical status, which you should always do, of course, and there is no clinical decline in pseudoprogression. You can also do perfusion imaging. For example, in this case of a tumor that was only biopsied, and one week after radiotherapy, there is an increase in tumor. And this is the same time point. And on perfusion images, you can see that there's only a little bit of elevation of RCBV on the posterior side of the tumor, but not in the rest of the tumor. So in pseudoprogression, there's no increase in RCBV. The leakage of the contrast causes the enhancement. 
you can also do perfusion imaging in the follow-up of low-grade astrocytomas because if the perfusion goes up this might be a predictor for dedifferentiation and if you do perfusion imaging in oligodendroglioma because of their chicken wire vessels and their slightly elevated RCBV at baseline perfusion imaging an oligodendroglioma is only useful if you have a baseline scan, so you can compare the perfusion to baseline. To distinguish progression and pseudoprogression in glioblastomas, you can also do MR spectroscopy. In pseudoprogression, there is low choline and low NAA, whereas in true tumor tissue, there is high choline. Or you can look at the metabolism, and if there is an increased metabolism on F-DOPA PET, it's true tumor progression. In this case, there was no increased uptake, but they were not sure that it wasn't tumor, so they did a re-resection just to be sure, but it showed no viable tumor. Patients that have MGMT methylated glioblastoma seem to have an increased risk for pseudoprogression and pseudoprogression is favorable because patients with pseudoprogression make more response to the tumor and have a better prognosis than patients who do not have pseudoprogression. So it's a good thing if you have pseudoprogression although it looks worrisome on imaging. What is not a good thing to have is another thing that's induced by radiotherapy and that's radiation necrosis. This typically occurs longer after therapy. So this is 9 to 12 months after therapy. And we're going to talk about radiation necrosis next time.